Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Happy Thursday to all of you ladies and gentlemen. And let me remind you that tomorrow at 2 p.m. Alaska time, 6 p.m. Eastern time, we will be having a live stream. All right, so hope to see you all there. Before we start, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you very much to ITM Trading for sponsoring this video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't been to ITM Trading and visited Ms. Lynette Zhang and Eric and then the entire crew that works in the background, go check out their YouTube channel because they have an awesome YouTube channel. Not only that, they provide what I think is an invaluable service in the times that we're living in now. But we'll go ahead and talk about them a little bit later on. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. Food collapse incoming. Ongoing drought forces farmers to abandon wheat crops that's here in the United States, ladies and gentlemen. I saw a video, I think it was a couple of days ago, if not a day ago or so, saying that Italy was having shortages in pasta. And of course, what's used to make pasta? Wheat. And they're having a shortage in pasta in Italy. And we all know that in Italy, I think per capita, they are the largest consumers of pasta in the world. I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. But ladies and gentlemen, what this means for us here in the United States, and I'm going to go over some of this with you all because it's not by 5% or 10%. It's by a whole bunch. Farmers are actually leaving their crops in the field because they're just not getting enough water in order for the crops to actually provide enough of a harvest. So wheat for those of you that may not know, it's in almost everything. Almost everything that you consume, that you go to, to a supermarket, wheat is involved. You know, we've got wheat, we've got corn. Those two things and sugar are involved in almost any kind of foods that are processed. So this is going to be a big deal for the future. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the lessons learned before we even go over this article. And that is, is stock up on everything that you consume and that your family consumes now. Because just like sugar, we're having a sugar shortage, rice, now wheat as well. These things are going to affect the prices of even those things that have nothing to do with wheat. Maybe oats. Maybe since wheat is going to be in a shortage, then maybe oats will go up in price because people will have to shift from one thing to the other, either because it's just not available or more than likely because they are being priced out of that market. And some may think, man, how can you get priced out of wheat? Bread is not that expensive. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been happening all over the world. It's just that we have the privilege of living in a first world nation that has the reserve currency of the world thus far. That's why it hasn't really happened here yet where people are getting priced out in the masses like from basic things like bread and pasta and things like that. Even though it's gotten a lot more expensive, it's happening in the other parts of the world first. For those of you that have been with me for a, for a long time, since like shortly after the beginning, after I started this channel, I mentioned that a lot of these things that are happening now in other parts of the world would happen in those third world nations first, that they would happen in the emerging markets first for the mere fact that we have the reserve currency of the world. And that's exactly what's going on. But eventually the chickens will come home to roost, ladies and gentlemen. With rising inflation, bank failures, and massive layoffs across multiple sectors, the future of the economy remains uncertain. It's no wonder the central banks have been getting prepared by stockpiling gold. At ITM Trading, we have spent over 27 years building a team of seasoned researchers and analysts who can help you prepare for any financial crisis. Our experts are ready to provide you with proven strategies to safeguard your wealth and assets in the event of an economic downturn or currency reset, which is frankly inevitable. Don't wait until it's too late. Schedule your free gold and silver strategy call by clicking on the link in the description below. The ongoing drought in large parts of the United States is forcing wheat farmers to abandon a portion of their crop at rates not seen in over a century. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, producers, especially in U.S. Plains region, are expected to harvest only about 67% of their planted acres, the lowest harvest ratio since 1917. Let's go ahead and stop right there and talk about that 67%. 
that 67% may not seem too bad. You're like, well, 67%, that's not terrible. That's more than half. But just hold on, ladies and gentlemen. This is a lot worse than what it sounds like. The high rate of abandonment stemmed from years of freak weather patterns in the Great Plains that took their toll on American grain fields. Many wheat plants planted this winter were stunted by a lack of moisture making many unable to produce the heads of grain that are harvested in their nutrients. We were talking about this months ago, like before winter started. We were talking about the winter planting and how bad it was going to be, not only because of the drought, but because of the cold snaps that they were getting as well. Okay, and I know that you're wondering, where is this part, AP, that is going to get really bad, that it's a lot worse than what it sounds? We're getting to it here. Kansas, Texas wheat suffering greatly, and Kansas is like the biggest wheat producer, I believe, in the United States. I believe it's Kansas. All told, some 37.5 million acres were planned to last fall. Now listen, either with soft, red, or hard winter wheat... The Agriculture Department's estimates suggested that 25.3 million of those planted acres of wheat have grown anything worth harvesting. So only 25.3 million, which is about 67%, right, have grown anything worth harvesting, right? But listen, of the 67% of wheat that can be harvested, the USDA noted that just 28% of that crop has been rated in good to excellent condition. So not 28% of the whole 100%, but 28% of the 67% of the wheat that can be harvested is good for human consumption. All right, ladies and gentlemen? So that 67% isn't even close to the drop of what it really is once you take out the wheat that cannot be consumed by humans. The soft red winter wheat crop is used mainly as animal feed and for processed foods. Isn't that something? It's used for animal feed or processed foods that who eats? Humans eat. <laughs> uh, while hard red wheat is used in baked goods. Hard red wheat also represents about 40% of total U.S. wheat production and can be grown either as a cash crop or a cover crop. In Kansas, the top producer of hard red wheat, around 10% of the crop was abandoned. Meanwhile, in Texas, a whopping 65% of hard red wheat acres were abandoned. 65%, ladies and gentlemen. Both abandonment rates were well above the historical average of 6% for Kansas and 55% for Texas over the past 10 years. Now here they finish this off by saying the punishing conditions that the country's hard red winter wheat have been in are underlined by the USDA's crop conditions report. In Kansas, only 11% of the crop is in good to excellent condition. Incredible. Far below the 38% five-year average. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that's like more than 60%. That's like 70% less than the average. Hard red winter wheat in Texas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma aren't much better at 20%, 12%, and 7% respectively. I don't know how this is going to end, but I do know this. I do know that if you are prepared with those things that you eat, all right, that you will be far better off than those people that are taking vacations right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen? I understand that we have to have some good times in life. We have to have some good memories. And uh, they really are worth the money that you put into those memory-making devices like vacations or buying a toy or something like that. Uh, I understand we do have to do that because, you know, what's it all for then, you know, if you can't have some good memories? However, if you don't get prepared and something happens like what I believe is going to happen, which is a culmination of a lot of cycles, food shortage, civil unrest, war cycle, economic collapse cycle, a reset of a currency cycle. All of these cycles are going to culminate in a time span that's going to be very close together. If you don't prepare for what's coming, then what's going to happen is, is that you're going to end up having a lot more worse memories than good memories so maybe you should consider shifting some of your resources in order so that you can get better prepared and make sure that you can at the very minimum 
feed your families. And by the way, I put out a video earlier today where I reviewed a Bogue RV. I always want to say Rogue, but it's Bogue RV cooler, which is awesome. It's an electric cooler that's portable that, you, that has a couple of different compartments and you can switch them to be refrigerator or freezer or make the whole thing into a freezer. It actually works with a battery that you can attach to it and not have to be hooked up to the grid or anything. That thing is awesome. It is awesome ladies and gentlemen so check that video out because they're actually giving a really good deal on that so check that video out hopefully it will actually be out you know before this video goes out because they haven't given me permission to post it yet but hopefully it'll be out before this one goes out having said that have a great day hope to see you tomorrow during our live stream god bless every one of you god bless america i'm alaska prepper i'm out